Hello everyone, my name is Tierra Best and I'm a student at Washington Adventist University. I'm currently studying theology and music and today I want to tell you that you were created by God in His beauty to create beauty around you. God has declared in His word that we were intentionally, intricately, and beautifully made. No exceptions. Son of God, daughter of God, you are a masterpiece filled with the capacity to do great things. You are called to be a creative, designed by the Creator in His image. You were given gifts and talents to showcase so every nation, tribe, and tongue can witness God's all-perfect nature against this flawed world. Your life is a ministry of creativity. Whether you are called to be a mechanic, a teacher, a hairstylist, artist, or pastor, you have a purpose, a purpose to create something beautiful. In whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Now, as we look at the first angel's message in Revelation 14, we read about the greatest creative mind. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made the heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water, Revelation 14 verses six and seven. God had a plan in mind when creating the foundations of the earth. He knew what he was doing. God dared to imagine. You have the capacity to dream, to imagine, but God wants us to transform our imaginations so our desires can align with his plan. After all, his word never fails. He spoke and things appeared. According to the book of Genesis, the earth was formless and void. When God said, let there be light, there was light. As we go through the history of creation, we see this pattern. God speaks the sun, the stars, the moon, the plants, and animals into existence. However, God created us humans. He did something different. Check this out. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Genesis 1, verses 26 and 27. God personally handcrafted us. He created us in his own likeness. His mind is so brilliant that we cannot even fully comprehend it. So when we have dreams that we wish to fulfill, we need to give them to our creator, the one who can turn our dreams into a reality. As I mentioned earlier, God wants our imaginations transformed so he can use our dreams to create a beautiful reality. However, in our limited lens of reality, our dreams are not always in the will of God. In Romans chapter 12, 2, Paul says that we are to be transformed by renewing our minds, that we can then prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Naturally, our dreams usually address our needs alone, but not the needs of others. We are naturally inclined to be self-centered, but God calls us to be other-centered. Since he is all-knowing, he is aware of the needs of every individual that walks the earth. God wants to use our lives to benefit others. According to his principles, it is better to give than to receive. We are called to use our talents to brighten the world around us. We are called to be the light of the world by God's light shining not only through what we say, but most importantly, through what we do. Our passion fuels our purpose. Our actions speak louder than our words. So in whatever you do, whether you like to sing, draw, write, exercise, teach, play, God calls us to use these gifts to minister to those around us. Once we immerse ourselves in the mind of God, which is best expressed through His Word, the Bible, our greatest desires will align with the desire of God to create beauty, love others deeply, and make the world a better place.